I thank the representative of the United States. I now give the floor to Maulana Fazal Ur Rehman, Chairman, Foreign Relations Committee of the National Assembly of Pakistan. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, our thanks be to Allah for his mercy and uh, blessings upon the Prophet uh, and his kin. Mr. President, allow me first of all to thank His Excellency the Secretary General for his comprehensive report entitled Assistance in Mine Clearance. The report indeed provides us with the main elements which will help our efforts aimed at dealing with all the aspects uh, related to mine clearance. Mr. President, it is indeed gratifying to know that there is an increasing awareness within the international community as to the acuteness and the scope of the danger caused by landmines which have been planted irresponsibly and indiscriminately. The Secretary General has explained in his report that landmines do not uh, kill human beings only but destroy whole countries because they hamper the reconstruction of a normal economic and social life. It is indeed horrifying to read facts connected to the arbitrary and indiscriminate use of landmines. More than 110 million landmines have been scattered throughout the world. Every month, more than 800 people fall victim to those mines most of them civilians and innocent bystanders. The number of people maimed or handicapped uh, is even greater. Those figures are not simply or mere figures for Pakistan. We have ourselves experienced the destruction caused by arbitrary landmines. More than 10 million mines are scattered throughout Afghanistan. In our own medical facilities, thousands of Afghan refugees have been treated. Pakistan, in fact, has undertaken the treatment of those victims and their rehabilitation. And moreover, we continue to host a very large number of refugees for landmines are an obstacle to uh, the safe return of those refugees to their homeland. Mine clearance is indeed a precondition for reconstruction in any country. It is necessary to re-establish an environment which will enable society to resume its ordinary daily life. Mr. President, it is indeed uh, comforting to note uh, that steps have been taken throughout the past few years to alleviate the problem of land mines and particularly the humanitarian aspects of such mines. The United Nations have established a strategy uh, to deal uh, with the problem of land mines, has even established a voluntary trust fund for assistance in emergency situations and in order to complement uh, the contributions of member states, an international conference dealing with mine clearance was held last July. This was the first time such a large number of politicians and experts from different parts of the world came together to discuss all the dimensions of the problem of landmines. In fact, the conference, which brought together 
approximately 100 government representatives and 60 organizations is proof uh, of the increasing awareness of the problem of landmines. Contributions were pledged uh, to the tune of approximately 20 million American dollars at the uh, conference, which would uh, allow the fund to become fully operational. Efforts are still being undertaken to alleviate the sufferings of the victims from uh, landmines. However, mine clearance is very slow and lags behind. Last year, only 100,000 mines were cleared. And if at this rate, we would need approximately a thousand years uh, to put an end uh, to the 110 million mines scattered throughout the world. Two questions arise. Why the slow pace? And can we speed it up? The reason for the slow pace is the lack of resources and the limited capacity of the affected countries. The primitive technology for the detection and clearance of mines is also reason. And above all that, a lack of technical international cooperation. Yet the problems are not insuperable, and we can overcome them by objective planning. Mr. President, the Secretary General recognized in his report that the cost to initiate a mine clearance operation is usually very high because mine clearing programs also necessitate uh, their own infrastructure. Unfortunately, most of the affected countries do not have the necessary resources to initiate the operations. And the presence of the mines transforms arable land uh, into areas that are shunned and cannot be cultivated. The setting up uh, of the trust fund is a step in the right direction. The supplementary financing was indeed necessary. When uh, resources are not available for the UN uh, to respond rapidly, contributions and grants should be given outside uh, the scope of the trust itself. The proposal for setting up a demining standby capacity is indeed a very good proposal, for it will increase the available resources in the form of uh, contributions in kind for mine clearance. We hope that many such contributions will be forthcoming in the form uh, of trained experts and equipment to be put uh, under the disposal of the UN. Financing is necessary not only for field operations, but also for research in order to improve uh, the technology and the techniques of mine clearance. The international community should indeed uh, exert uh, doubled efforts in order to develop such techniques and set up a mechanism encouraging international cooperation in this particular field. The necessary technology and the steady and increasing financing are all essential in order to reinforce the national capacity of the affected countries. Mr. President, we believe that those who scatter and plant landmines should assume the main responsibility for clearing those mines. Those who have caused chaos by scattering such mines in an arbitrary fashion should not uh, leave the scene of the massacre. They should pay the price of the chaos uh, and the havoc they have caused. International operations of mine clearance should be based on that particular principle rather than entrusting the affected countries alone with the responsibility of clearing the mines. Mr. President, Mines are still being scattered uh, without uh, the provision of the maps uh, of such mines. This is indeed a challenge to international law. 
the problem is not static. And in this respect, uh, the relevant uh, agencies of the United Nations are considering the measures to control uh, armament and disarmament. We do not need to dwell at length for Pakistan has been part of all the efforts to solve the problem and will continue to do so. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank Maulana Fasal Ul Rahman, Chairman, Foreign Relations Committee of the National Assembly of Pakistan. I now give the floor to the representative of Lao People's Democratic Republic. President, 